Hey guys, this is Azra here, and I'm here today running a bit of industrial genomics once again. We're still trying out the Bioethics Association Caprice kind of trap and also the opportunity to build a, a reasonable remote deck. Um, this starting hand against Leela, not good. No money, lots of things that can potentially be bounced early, so yeah, this is definitely a mull for me. This is uh, a bit better, I think. Uh, Soma Coma is not a, it's not a phrase I've heard before, but okay. So we're really worried about the fact that we, we could lose a very early agenda here from HQ, which would be kind of rough, and obviously the threat of a coin siphon is very real. Not sure what the best play here is actually. I may draw first actually. Okay, so Architect is a piece of ice. <laughs> um, oh my. <laughs> so that's not a phrase I've heard before. And unfortunately we can't miss both of these here. Architect doesn't end the run, so we have to be really conscious that this could go pretty bad. The seven agendas in deck. Oh, we does see a future perfect. Oh, oh that's grim. I feel like spinning two is probably the right play here. Yeah, okay. I uh, My gut sometimes says zero to try and get tricky, but I feel like it was too risky there not to do anything other than spend two. But now I'm in a really tough spot um, where he's probably going to spend zero this time. Yep. And now we are going to lose this agenda, guaranteed because I want to res this path campaign. And if I don't res it, I think it's a bad play. If I don't res it, I spend one, he spends zero. We get one more 50-50 go, best chance. I'm just gonna let this agenda go. He's gonna get the bounce architect back and we're gonna be incredibly vulnerable to an account siphon here. So yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty horrible. If he trashes the pad here, we're going to be super sad, but he did draw, which is not the end of the world. Okay. Not sure. I'm really not sure actually what the best way to go about this is here. So we'll look to stabilize. Losing the future perfect is definitely the worst agenda for us to, to give up early. And it's kind of the downside of running nine agendas instead of eight. Oh, we lose a caprice as well. Ouch. Okay, does pay for a pad that I've not paid for. It's pretty crazy. He's just digging hard here. He gets nothing at the last. So I'm kind of all right with that. So, oh goodness, we can't afford to res this. Um, I'm going to res the turtle backs because this is his last click and it kind of gives away the game that there is an agenda in here. Oh my goodness, well, at least it wasn't the food, but we are in a horrendous spot now. Okay, so Wallastatic's a better install. So we could do Wallastatic, we could do Bioethics and then take a credit. I think that's probably what's going to happen. So I'm still, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit concerned, obviously, another future perfect steal would be the game over. Uh, the three foods, the other Kronos and the Fetal all could be stolen without the game ending, but we're so far behind at this point. Okay. Oh, he tries to siphon and we're gonna to get to stop that actually. That's pretty good for us. Oh, well, I'm trying to work out why. Why he then went back to R&D after, how strange. And he's not gonna have the credits to trash that, but we also don't have the credits to res it, so. Not a great spot. The 
this might be just a credit turn. Oops, didn't mean to click that. Or we could credit, credit, install the hostile infrastructure, but really I think keeping a couple of agendas in hand is not bad. Um, I'm worried about the account siphon, but he is on zero credit, so I just have to hope that he can't get in this turn. And we both kind of slow down a little bit here as the uh, initial kind of craziness goes. He does spend the two, which is enough for, oh, for goodness sake, which is enough for the fetal AI and enough to, you know, obviously side game for the future perfect. Um, so yeah, the deck is just uh, against us right now. We get a shock, which is good. So yeah, we're just in a tricky spot here. I'm gonna, I think, draw hedge fund architects probably gonna be the play. I could just, mm, architect and hedge fund I think have to happen. Do I need to draw? Maybe not actually. We could just put down the bioethics instead, but we have nothing in the bin in terms of stopping him trashing, which is pretty grim. But I think even just forcing him to go and get it is, is not that bad. If I draw, I'll go to eight and still two, so I'd just drop the shock then. So yeah, let's draw. Mumba's good here. In fact, the Mumba actually may be a better install than the hedge fund at this point. So let's do the architect and R&D. Let's install the Mumba. Let's drop the shock. Yeah, I think I kind of prefer this a little bit. Um, I mean, realistically, we're now in a prime account ciphering uh, situation, but um, that is not too bad. This is going to get to fire. Uh, hostile infrastructure, future perfect. Oh my goodness. Snare, uh, hedge fund. Actually, Garu may be actually the call here. Um, ignoring the install cost. So I think the actually Garu on HQ might be the play. Knowing that that future perfect is coming. And then from archives, we'll get the bioethics, I think. Or the pad. I think either is definitely bioethics or the pad. That's a toughie. Or I could put the Caprice on HQ. Or maybe like the pad here actually. Mm. No, let's do the bioethics. Let's get aggressive with this. Since I've got another one in hand on hostile infrastructure, let's try and put some pressure on. So he's going to access another hostile infrastructure now. And then below that is a future perfect, which we absolutely need to protect in HQ. Um, I'm going to leave this potentially unresed because it saves me a click this time round. Yeah. I want to keep enough credits to res this Ashigaru now. So hedge fund puts us to nine. We could then do the hostile infrastructure and uh, the bioethics. That being said, the future perfect sitting on R&D is potential issue but I think I'm okay leaving it there for now okay so if we can survive this turn which I'd like to think with the architect sitting here we, we probably can and if we do survive this turn we're going to be in a very strong position Currently only one face down shock in archives, so there's really not a lot um, stopping him trashing things other than the fact that he is on six points and probably really just wants to score and finish this game off before I get my um, remote play going. Okay, awesome. So very happy for him to slow up a little bit here and start to look at the long game because actually I'm happy with him being on six points in this game going longer. And we'll res our two bioethics. And we hit a gang sign and it's good for you. So that's a pretty good hit actually. So I think drawing up 
and potentially trashing another card is definitely something I want to do here. Yeah, let's just keep going. Um, I think actually the hedge fund might be the card to get rid of here. Hostile infrastructure, putting a second one out would probably have been good also actually. Well, let's dump the hedge fund and let's dump the new MP for now. I have learned from my previous games that having the new MPs towards the end of the game can really just grab you a win out of nowhere. But right now I think getting some face down cards in here, forcing him into a difficult trashing situation is gonna do a ton for us. This bank job's all right. I'm not too, too concerned about it. Right now we're gonna be forcing him to draw a lot, which is great. We'll get the hostile infrastructure up. We had a code gate breaker, which is awesome. So the Inti and the Zill is gone. So I'm just thinking, so we've got three agendas gone. If he does hit another Kronos, he wins. So I feel like R&D needs to get the Lotus Field onto it. So I think Mamba, Lotus Field, Hostile Infrastructure are all gonna go out this turn to leave us two agendas in the snare in hand, which is risky, but I'm kind of happy with this Ashigaru. He could inside job and barrier breaker, but two cards in hand, I doubt that's gonna be realistic. Okay, just gonna zoom out one touch. So yeah, this is, this is potentially quite a strong position for us now. The unfortunate thing is that we don't really have enough ice now to support a strong remote. This actually Garu and Wallace Static really want to be on the remote that we're trying to score from. Relying on the Architects and a Lotus Field or Cricks to protect a remote is not something I want to be doing. Um, let's do some more resing here. And I think I'll just go ahead and res to Hostile as well. We'd really love to get another shock and a Shiku into the bin. There's the Kronos, okay. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Having it in hand is kind of good. At least I know where it is now. But inside, inside job is still a really real threat. Gonna make a run, which is good. We're happy Leela making runs, to be honest. And getting the opportunity to raise anything is always good against Leela. This is still very inside jobable. Okay. So I think I'm gonna Jackson. And another turtle box is good. Another Jackson's good, obviously. Um, and let's just go ahead and bin the future perfect. So we've got nine agendas in the deck, um, two future perfects. And um, we'll both be side games, but the other four would all be an instant win for him. So two of them in our hand, that does mean there's a Kronos, uh, oh, sorry, excuse me, there's two food, and that'll basically give him the wins. Uh, yeah, we need to remove that agenda. And what have we got? Let's get the Caprice and the pad. No, let's get the Neural MP back in play. I don't think money's actually a big concern for us now. Where's this turtle box? And another Jackson, wow, we, and we're continuing to do two net damage a turn. If we hit another breaker, we could be on to a pretty good position here. Okay, there's a Shiku and a Capri. 
increase, which is great, although we really don't have even a piece of ice to put in front of a server to start building one. And I don't want to put her out on her own. So I think I'm just going to overdraw here. So there's Lotus. So let's put the CQ away. Let's get rid of this Jackson. Uh, let's get rid of this Global Food, which we'll shuffle back in. No museum seen yet, which um, it's not having a huge impact. And the snare, I think we'll want to shuffle back in at some point. But this Lotus Field and Caprice are going to be crucial just time. I'm starting to put some pressure on now that we're 6 0 down. Sorry to zoom out again, guys. This deck really isn't the most uh, recording or YouTube compatible. Okay, so going to the bin. The Dirty Laund, or, or the CQ is going to come off here, actually. Uh, we are running two of them. So we'll get rid of the food, uh, the Jackson and the snare. And for CQ to be effective here, we really just want to pay three. Because if he takes the net damage, he would die then from the bioethics. So he goes down to five, still means the global food gives him the win, but the Kronos doesn't, which is actually nice. And there's a museum. Okay. We do have two neural EMPs in hand, which I think I may just fire off here. Hmm. Where are we at with inside jobs? Haven't seen any played. But he was willing to run knowing there were shocks in there, which means maybe he's not too concerned about losing the cards in his hand. We might be better just setting up the remote now this turn and keeping the early MPs for when we actually have a kill opportunity. So let's do that. We will res the Caprice for fear of drive-by or councilman. And this isn't a bad server. It's not a great server. Obviously, inside job's going to get straight through this, but we've got the Caprice there. And it's unlikely that uh, he'll be able to really do this and continue putting pressure on this. This she could give us an opportunity to really make this play. And if we can, Kronos Protocol out 20 cards. Or Kronos Project out 20 cards. I'm kind of happy with that. Not sure if Leela really runs a lot of recursion. We've only seen three influence points so far. So drawing up. I mean, not dealing with these uh, with these uh, hostile infrastructures or not even that. These these bioethics are really struggling now. The one thing I have to note is that he can now get into HQ. But there's no agendas there any longer. And I'm not too scared of a Count Siphon. We lost an inside job on a turntable. That's pretty great for us, actually. Oh, I actually forgot about the bounce, of course. That's silly of me, but that's not a big deal. If he runs my hand here and hits snare, this game could be done. In fact, if he hits snare, this game is done. Oh my word. And that's going to be the game. Wowie, so what a dig back. This deck is nothing to be laughed at. It really like was under so much pressure early. Um, we did give away a lot of agendas, but just by really getting this pad uh turtlebacks and a mumba temple just getting those three to stick that just powered us through and enabled us to get all the cards and um, to hold on the board we didn't even need to ice um archives that game and i think that was really down to us getting a couple of bits of ice on the centrals and knowing where our agendas were for the most part and um, ended up working pretty well that's probably the best of the three games i've played so far with this deck so again guys any comments and changes or anything you've noticed please do fire them below they're always always welcome and thanks so so much for watching